your approach this last month is kind of what you wanted to do maybe with your last spots? Uh, we wanted to kind of, in the in January recruiting cycle, we wanted to look around, take a look, see if we thought anybody fit us, uh, and if they did, take our best swing at them. Um, th this year was different than last year. Uh, last year, there was quite a few really good players available after the first signing day. This year, there weren't near as many, and the guys that were got recruited by everybody. Um, yeah, I've been doing this long enough to know that sometimes uh, when you want to just take another guy or two to fill a spot, um, those don't turn out as good as often as guys that you've recruited and know well. Uh, so, so we did our best to um, get to know some guys and, and take some looks at some guys that we thought might still be able to help at certain positions. And, uh, but we weren't, we weren't going to reach and, and take guys, just take them. Yeah, I think this is probably where we'll land going forward, and I think most people will. Uh, and I think people are landing there because that's the trend right now. Um, you know, again, like I said last year, there was a, there was a good number of good players that didn't sign. Uh, there were still some this year, but not the same numbers. And um, if this year's any indication, most people are going to sign their classes early, and you better have the guys in the boat that you really want uh, with a few spots in your back pocket uh, if you're doing it right. Yeah, just being honest, when you come in as a new coach, you're two years behind because you're just starting to um, come in here. We were just starting to look at 2019 guys last year that we could get to Nebraska in December. Um, work a lot farther down the road now, looking at 2020s already in January, some 2021s. And we're probably still a, a half a cycle behind, uh, but that's going to be easy to catch the rest of the way up in May. Uh, haven't already looked at some young kids, our May recruiting um, can be a little more specific with some of the targets we've already found, and we'll probably be able to get even farther ahead with the 21 class. How do you feel about your numbers just by position? Are, are they where you want them to be now, or is there still some room there to go? No, you know, there's nothing about what we're trying to do that can get fixed, at, you know, at the drop of a hat. And, you know, coming in, there was a couple position groups that were desperately low with scholarship players and players in general, um, some things we had to fix um, to get them the way we wanted them. We're, we're getting a heck of a lot closer, but you know, going into this recruiting cycle, I want to take the best players I could and, and try to help our team as much as we could. Um, and knowing that we weren't going to be able to fill all the holes and, and get all the pieces that we would want in one year. Yeah, I'd say this about a lot of the guys, but first thing is, is we really liked him as a person, uh, really enjoyed his family. Um, DeMarion's a kid that can really run. Uh, our, our offense, as long as I've been in it, has been really successful and dangerous, and we have a bunch of people that are weapons and can do a lot with the ball in their hands. Uh, DeMarion's got legitimate speed, uh, was a good player on both sides of the ball and returning kicks down in Oklahoma. And uh, receiver was one of the areas where we were way below the number of players that we need or would like to have uh, when we walked into the door a year ago. So um, that was one of our priorities to get some guys that we can start bringing along and developing. And uh, we felt like we could use one more and, and we were glad he was available. Yeah, I, I don't want to get into specifics, but uh, we have a, a baseline number for how many outside backers, inside backers, D-line, and so forth that we'd like to have on scholarship. And it's never exact. Uh, you're always one over at one spot and one under at another. But we're getting a lot closer to being where we need to be from a depth standpoint. You lost some pretty good playmakers on offense, too, in particular. What is your level of Yeah, losing Stanley is going to be tough to replace. He was a great player around here for a long time. Gosh, I enjoyed being around him for a year. Um, hopefully some of these young kids that we brought in can help fill the gap. And there's some guys on campus that uh, I'm, I'm expecting to make huge jumps this year. Um, a lot of times a first year in a system, some kids don't quite flourish and they make a huge jump in year two. 
but there's a bunch of guys already on the roster from McQuitty to um, to Woody to Mike uh, to Andre Hunt, uh, even some walk-ons like Lever and Folkers, a, a bunch of guys that I, I think could take a step forward and help us next year. So there's a bunch of candidates to get us with three or four good wide receivers on the field, and I feel a lot better about that than I did a year ago. Uh, we fought hard for a lot of our, our commits. A lot of guys put a lot of time in for these guys, and, and I tip my cap to the coaching staff, Coach Fish, Coach Shenander, uh, Coach Held, Coach Verdusco, um, Coach Dawson were all involved in recruiting him. Uh, I think he felt at home here. I um, think he felt like this was a good opportunity. Uh, he's a dynamic playmaker. He's aggressive. Um, you know, you saw him hit Wandale in the all-star game, and you could kind of see what both kids are made of uh, from that play and that game in general. Um, love that we're adding more speed. I like the attitudes we're ad adding. I like the toughness we're adding, and, and Noah's certainly a part of that. Uh, he signed in December. We kept it under our head as best as we could to allow him to announce it at the Polynesian game the way he wanted to, uh, but he's a big addition for us. With the transparency now in the transfer market, how do you handle that going forward, just kind of evaluating that? I'm kind of first thing I anxious about is the transfer portal is going to be uh, old news very soon. As many kids that are going to put their name in, um, obviously we've had some kids go in. Um, there's going to be different circumstances. We had one kid go in that just wanted to look around, but his heart was here, and we welcomed him back. Um, I, you know, I think it's going to be more and more important for coaches to to have great relationships with their kids and and have a, a building that everybody wants to be in and keep everybody happy so you don't lose them. Uh, but there's going to be kids uh, from all over the country in that portal. Uh, I think it's going to be important to have a spot or two in your back pocket in case the right kid comes available. For us, it's got to be the right kid. It's got to be uh, somebody that's going to fit on our team and it's somebody that uh, is talented enough to help us. And um, we'll certainly keep our eye on that and we have some flexibility to take one or two of those if, if uh, the situation arises. I know Darian was a, a good player, but how much did his perceived leadership abilities at Oklahoma State factor do you guys bring him here that maybe he could come in and be a leader even though he's just been there for a time? Well, you don't become a captain of a team unless you're a good teammate, and we want good kids that are good teammates. I, I think he was anxious to play with his brother for a year. Um, his brother kept hinting at it, and we, we kept telling him we couldn't do anything until – the season was over, and if he put his name in the transfer portal, and, and after he did, honestly, it happened really fast, and this is where he wanted to be. So uh, we were glad to add a piece on our defensive line. I think he's going to help us. Yeah, you know, Divine ended up being such a big piece for us last year, and you asked the question before, and I didn't get around to him, but. Um, I think he surprised everybody, maybe even including himself and, and how well he performed this year. And, you know, I think he's got a future in football. He, that's tough to replace. Um, that being said, you know, I think uh, the group we have led by Mo Washington and some other young guys um, are going to make that position more talented than it has been. Um, but we're going to be really young. So we felt like we needed to add somebody that maybe had some experience. Getting to know Diedrich, you know, he's taken an a unusual path to get where he is, uh, but we really enjoyed being around him and getting to know him and seeing what he's fought through. Um, he's got some work to do to get here, but we feel confident it's going to get done. And uh, he's, he's more of an every down back and, and somebody that's older and hopefully a little more durable um, and, and a very talented player. So uh, we need to get him here and evaluate all that, but uh, we're excited about him. Yeah, you know, T. Fish has had great players everywhere he's been. He does a great job managing his room. He does a great job recruiting to get talent in his room. Um, that's going to be a really talented group of kids. Uh, there's some older guys, you know, with DiCaprio, um, with Deontay. Um, there's going to be a lot of young talent, too. So 
some of those old guys are going to have to uh, keep playing well. They're going to have to compete a little more, um, and they're going to have to to show that they can be leaders. Uh, some of the young guys were anxious to get in here and, and let them run around and compete, and I think that's going to be a, a deeper uh, unit than we've had. To be honest with you, that group uh, struggled a little bit to adapt to the way we wanted to do things early on in the year. and. Uh, the message to me coming out of the weight room is that group's about the best one in the weight room right now. So between the, the strength and conditioning group and uh, Coach Fish and Coach Fernander, I, I think that group's in a really good place and will be for a while. Speaking of your weight and conditioning program, what has impressed you about it uh, now that you've had that a year under your belt and how those freshmen have taken them Well, my office overlooks the weight room. So I don't get to see a lot, but I can look down and watch them working out. Um, last year, we had guys that couldn't even get through workouts that had no idea how hard we wanted them to work um, and weren't motivated to do it. Uh, looking down this year, uh, we're not starting from square one this year. We're starting from a good spot. Uh, love what I see. Love the good weight that people have put on. Love the look of the bodies and, and even love even more the attitude that I'm seeing down there. So. That's where you can really transform your team and make it bigger, faster, stronger. More importantly, make it tougher and more close knit. And I see really good things happening in there. When you look at your center position on the O line going forward, where do you see that headed this season? Uh, we're going to have open competition at center. Uh, obviously, uh, Will Farniak's coming back. Uh, Hunter Miller has a chance. I think there's some pl guys playing guard right now that uh, we're going to have to have snap the ball some uh, to give us op uh, options with those guys. Uh, obviously, Cam Jurgens moving there is going to be a piece of that too. So, that you know, there's going to be open competitions at every spot. There's going to be some interesting ones in spring, and center is definitely one of them. Scott, when you uh, see the success that Adrian had, is it easier to either go out and try to recruit a quarterback, or is it more challenging knowing that Adrian's still got three years left? Um, you know, when we had Marcus Mariota at Oregon, it was kind of tough to get the right guy for a couple years. Uh, I think everybody could see what he was and. Um, and I don't know if you were necessarily going to sign the best kid in the country the next year after he had started as a redshirt freshman. That being said, here, uh, Luke was one of our top guys on our board from the beginning. Uh, he's the type of kid that's not afraid of competition. I can't believe how quickly he's come in here and learned stuff, how hard he's been working, and how excited he is. So uh, I think we got a really good one in this class. We got one committed already for next class that I can't talk about. Um, you're not going to find an Adrian every day, but I, I love the, the kids that we're adding, including at that position. We talked a lot last season about culture. Um, so naturally, I'm sure when you're recruiting, you're looking for leadership components and things that make a good culture. Um, who, who in this class, and maybe everyone, but who in this class really jumped out to you as somebody like that guy one day is going to be a leader? And how do you, how do you, I guess, recruit for that? Recruit for character and for leadership and for those kind of people? To be honest with you, I think uh, getting to know kids and, and being honest with valuation of their character on top of their talent uh, leads you to getting the right type of kids. I think the way we recruit lends itself to us getting those type of kids. Um, I think those type of kids are attracted to my coaching staff and the guys in our building because when they get to know us, they see the, the character of these assistant coaches and other people, and, and those are the type of people they want to be around. Uh, I think they see the honesty in the way we recruit them, um, the, the genuine nature of the way we approach it, and that appeals to the right type of kid. Um, I don't know if I've seen an incoming class in my career that has me as excited uh, from that standpoint. Um, you can go across the board and, and see kids that were winners in high school, that were team captains in high school, that were state champions, that were in playoff games and semifinals and state championships. Um, I don't think we're going to be short on leadership from this class. Is there anybody that just in conversations that you had or like really enjoyed getting to know them just as a person? Look forward to the kind of leader they might become. Yeah, almost every single one. Yeah, you know, I, I could just address the guys that are already on campus. Um, you know, I don't know if I've seen a kid work harder in an off season to learn an offense than Luke, and he's been kind of the a little bit of the ringleader of that group already. Um, 
Wandale's kind of the same way, coming in and learning, and he, he's going to be able to play more than one position in his first year because of the way he learns, the way he approaches things. Um, Nick Henrich is, man, he's cerebral and smart and a problem solver and uh, tough, and I know he's going to be a leader on defense. Garrett Nelson's a wild man. I love it. Uh, and his energy is going to uh, lead us in some good directions. Uh, Chris Hickman, same way. Brant Banks, same way. Uh, Jamie Nance um, is doing a good job. So all these kids that are here, I think, have leadership potential. And the great thing is they're not the only ones. We have some more coming. Yeah, I think most of them will be. Uh, you know, touching on a few, Tate Wildeman is looking great. Um, he was dealing with a knee last fall. Um, Cam Jones had a shoulder. He's doing a great job in the weight room right now. Casey Rogers uh, had a shoulder. He's doing a great job in putting on weight. Um, you know, C.J. Smith is the one that got hurt in the middle of the season, and that might take a little longer for the most part. All the other guys that that we didn't have last season are, are up and going. And um, man, those guys uh, are going to make a difference in our team if they can approach this the right way. Maybe not being able to do stuff physically for the end of the season, how do you think they not so much took advantage of that, but maybe use sitting on the sideline to help maybe their mental game, their knowledge of the playbook in the team? Uh, we'll find out in spring ball how much work they were doing. Uh, I call them the the black sweatshirt posse because they all sat on the same the same place on the wall during practice wearing the same hooded sweatshirt. Um, usually the same one I had on. So I went over and joined them from time to time. But, you know, those guys are driven. You know, I mentioned Tate and Casey. Cam Jurgens was over there some. Cam Jones. Uh, Braxton was over there a little bit. There's some really talented kids. And, you know, I would get a little, a little uh, upset looking over how much talent we had sitting on the wall. And it was kind of unfortunate set of circumstances with those kids. But... Um, that's going to be almost like getting four or five or six more recruits in this class and, and guys that already have experience with our team. So uh, anxious to put all those pieces together. Do you ever have to take kids like that aside and just preach patience? You know, guys who are used to having all the success in high school and whether they don't play right away to get an injury or something else to just, you know, just stay with this year? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, first years are hard. I mean, it's different for Adrian or someone like that that comes in and plays. That's rare. Um, you know, for the guys that have to redshirt, you're used to being a high school superstar and a junior high superstar and a Pop Warner superstar, and you come to a place and you don't even get to play the game. Uh, you're just practicing. Um, it it can be hard on some kids, and some kids use it the right way and, and take advantage of that year and really get bigger, stronger, faster, learn scheme, and they come back even better. Some other kids struggle a little more. Uh, the great thing is I think we're going to get all our guys through that, and, and they're all in a really good place right now. I got to be honest with you, I haven't seen Mo since I've been off the road. I'm sick of traveling. I'm anxious to see him. Um, I know Zach's working hard with him. Dave Ellis is working hard with him. And, and he's not alone. There's a lot of guys that uh, we need to get bigger and stronger and mature. Um, but I just know how special Maurice could be uh, if he was 200, 210 pounds. And he certainly didn't come in at that weight. So we're working hard with him. I think his, his biggest issue is making sure he's eating right and the nutrition side of it because he's working his butt off uh, in the weight room. I don't know how much do you weigh. About well, He's definitely not as big as you. Uh, he's taller and leaner, and stronger, and yeah. Uh, no, go ahead. Did you do about 25 walk-ons this year too? I mean, that, that's obviously a high number. I mean, your, just your thoughts on the size of the walk-on group this year, kind of the message you wanted to send with the size of that class. Yeah, we want to grow the roster again. That was one of the secret sauces around here for a long time. Um, you know, Kenny Wilhite's done a great job with that. Trent Mossbrucker in our recruiting department. Jared Lambrick's done a great job with that. Um, you know, it, it's going to very soon be a competitive, and guys are going to have to earn their place on the team. And 
Um, I expect great things out of these walk-ons, kids that we're bringing in. We brought a bunch in in the last two classes. Uh, I think it'll be very soon when some of those guys start helping us and, and down the road a little farther, I think a lot of those guys are going to contribute, play, and hopefully start for us. Um, but I'm not just going to let guys be on the team to be on the team either. So it, it's going to be competitive just like your um, opportunity to be a starter at the university is competitive. And um, I think that'll be, make it put us in a really good place uh, where we have the right type of kids, kids that are on the team for the right reasons and hungry to be here. I think we kind of have a clearance uh, to be in the 150s and probably low 150s. Uh, so I imagine there there might be a little attrition. There might be some guys that don't end up making it, and some other and some other things. Some guys that graduate and move on. So um, we'll deal with that as, as the situations arise. But we're, I imagine we'll end up in the 150s somewhere. I want good people and I want athletic potential. Um, you know, some of the guys we got are big and have huge frames and are good athletes. Um, I, you know, Spencer Long is just a, a great example of what we're looking for. Uh, he's a guy that was a tight end. Maybe he didn't run quite well enough to be in an NFL tight end, but he had a huge frame and was a really good athlete. Got in the, this program, got in strength conditioning, and ends up being a uh, great player in the NFL. And not every guy has to be an O or D lineman, but I certainly think there's a lot of those running around the Midwest in Nebraska. Um, certainly looking for other positions too. Uh, but if guys are going to play here, it's going to get harder and harder to play here. And they better have some, some really good athleticism about them and better have a high upside. And, and if they do, we'll get them in the weight room with the right attitude and, and they'll hit the field. One or two more. In the last two years, you've taken roughly 40 walk-offs. Is the plan, or in-state walk-ons, sorry, is the plan to cultivate that even more every year and have about 20 each year? Or more? Yeah, moving forward, I hope we can afford to take that many per our numbers. Uh, and we'll see where we can get our total roster to. But um, we're going to start to get a little more selective. That being said, if there's a great player in the state of Nebraska or surrounding states and they want to be at Nebraska, we're going to take them. And we'll find a way to. So. Uh, we're starting to get a lot of things about the roster where we want it, including roster size and some guys that we can really look forward to developing because we think they're going to help us from the walk-on program. Because of the recruiting calendar, um, you're basically off the road during bowl season and the college football playoffs. So you had a chance, I think, the first time in many years uh, you weren't part of a postseason. What was that like for you, not being able to prepare for a bowl game? What, what if anything, did you take from from some of the major games, either involving the Big Ten or the college football playoffs? Um, yeah, I'm not used to having Christmas off. Uh, it was nice to be with family. I don't ever want it to happen again. Yeah. Um, so I've said this before. I've never been so anxious to get started the next year as I was at the end of this past season. I think our entire team had that attitude. Um, it was great to see the Big Ten have good success in bowls. Um, There's some really good performances by Big Ten teams that we battled with and played well with and in some cases uh, had a chance to win or won the games. Um, it, it lets me know that even though the, the program wasn't anywhere near where I want it yet at the end of last season, that maybe we're not that far away. And I think that's, uh, that can be a beacon of hope for all of us as, as we're working really hard this offseason. Scott, a bit off topic. Do you have a relationship with Zach Taylor? And what are your thoughts on the Husker being in the I know Zach pretty well. Uh, I, I would actually talk to Zach when he was playing here. Uh, there's kind of a Nebraska quarterback brotherhood that exists with most of, it, most of us. Um, how come every time I smile, you guys start taking pictures? <laughs> uh, you know, Zach married uh, the daughter of my head coach when I was in Green Bay. Um, she would be at practice once in a while. Coach Sherman's daughter would be at practice in, in Green Bay. Um, all I know about Zach is that he's a, he's a football guy. Um, every, everything I've ever heard about him is how much he loves the game. Uh, so he'll give me a reason to to try to uh, root for him and, and Cincinnati a little bit. Um, and we wish him nothing but the best. Scott, we're five weeks away from spring football. Just give us your perspective on where this team is at at the end of spring 
Um, I, the biggest difference I see is how, how kids walk onto our floor more often. They're around the coaches. They have smiles on their faces. I think everybody's excited. And, and that's a far cry from uh, where we were. You know, I walked into the first team meeting room, and it was you could have heard a pin drop in there. Um, that's not the team I want to coach. I want a team, team that I walk into the team meeting room, and they're having fun and chatting it up and loving being around each other, and then they can dial it in and get to work. And uh, the attitudes that I see and the camaraderie that I see uh, isn't even on the same level, not even close to where it was a year ago. And I, I give credit to that to all these assistant coaches that are working with them every day. But um, I think these guys are ready to have a lot of fun. Yeah, as far as I know, I saw him this morning. Uh, he was going to class, I think, so I was like proud of him. Yeah, he had a high ankle sprain. Um, I won't need to say much more about it. He, he was so close to me to playing the Iowa game, but just, just couldn't change direction well enough for us to trust him out there.